Hi, uh, thanks a lot for having me. It's uh, actually my first Tmux, and it's the first talk of the day. I managed to put a live demo in it, so what should possibly go wrong? <laughs> um, yeah, as Matt already said, my name is Christoph Guttanin. I'm from Berlin. I'm a freelancer, and I usually build multimedia applications for the web. And the, the beauty of my unusual last name is that it's fairly unique, so if you want to reach out to me, you can find me as Chris Guttanin almost anywhere on the internet. Yeah, please feel free to do so. I'm, I'm talking about the timing object because I think it's, it's ready for widespread use. And more specifically, it's about the timing object. Oh, I have to go over here. It's about the timing object specification, which um, is a spec to, uh, yeah, which describes how to synchronize things on the internet or more specifically in the browser. It's a W3C draft, um, which means it's uh, not yet implemented in any of the, of the browsers. Um, but, um, yeah, that was a problem when it was presented first in 2015 um, because, uh, yeah, if, if you want to use something in the browser and no browser vendor is interested in implementing it, there's actually no way of using it. <laughs> but uh, luckily this, this changed recently because uh, new browser APIs like the audio worklet or the off-screen canvas or um, uh, web codex made it possible to implement all of this uh, in JavaScript. So we don't have to wait for the browser vendors to implement that, which is actually cool, but I think it's still very useful to have a standard way of synchronizing things, uh, yeah, which makes life easier for all of us. Um, so this is an example. Let's imagine um, you have a video and you have some captions for it, and they are both separate uh, components. Then you can use the timing object to synchronize them on the, in the browser. And uh, the timing object is um, fully content agnostic, so you can synchronize whatever you want. You can also synchronize two different videos in the browser. That was, for example, the use case presented by Jack Blom at last year's DMAX. And um, you could also synchronize uh, a video with its soundtrack, which might become useful for the next talk. Keep that in mind. And <laughs> you can also synchronize uh, a video in two different browsers on the same device, or you could uh, synchronize the same video on multiple devices uh, uh, yeah, remotely. And that's actually what Spotfish is using the timing object for. It's, it's a company which allows you to, to watch the same video with others in perfect sync. And um, yeah, the timing object, as I already said, doesn't care what you synchronize. So you could also synchronize different content. And it's very hard to spot. It's a bit like a spot the difference game. But in the bottom right corner, there's actually different content now. I tried to visualize that here. So it's a different camera angle. And uh, that can be used to, to uh, build a, um, a classic second screen experience. And of course, if you apply that to a sports broadcast, you can uh, prevent the spoiling of, of the next touchdown or of the next goal uh, when your neighbor already starts screaming. And I'm sure you, you can all think of a thousand different use cases for that. And uh, the use case that, that I thought of is actually this presentation. <laughs> so after all, the presentation is just a video with uh, one or two frames per minute. So if you want to, you can go to bit.ly slash dmx minus 2022, and that will open up the same slide deck, and it should be synchronized, hopefully. So as you probably all know, uh, this is not very new. Like we, we synchronize things already, and there are a lot of standards and specifications uh, which deal with synchronization. And I just put some on, of them on this slide. These are the ones that I could remember from the top of my head. But I'm, I'm sure you all know much more of those, and probably your favorite one is missing. And uh, maybe you hate me now because you think that, that I want to replace those or <laughs> that the timing object wants to replace those. But actually, the timing object doesn't replace any of those. It's, um, you can still use whatever you want to, to synchronize things under the hood. It's just a standard to, to um, make it that all the synchronization more interoperable and to standardize how we deal with them in the browser. And since I think this is important, I put it on an extra slide. That, uh, because I want to emphasize again that the timing object isn't uh, meant to, to replace any of the existing synchronization standards. Uh, it's just meant to make dealing with them in the browsers more easy, uh, yeah, more easy and uh, in, a, in a standardized way. So it's not competing with any of the others. It's just trying to make things easier for us. 
And let's take a look at how that actually works. Like the core piece of the spec is something called a timing state vector. And it's basically a JavaScript object with four properties. It has a timestamp, which is the point in time when this vector was created. And it has a position, with, which is the position at this point in time. And then it also has a velocity and an acceleration to uh, expand that point on, on the timeline. And we can also visualize that by putting it in a coordinate system. Like here we have the, the time on the x-axis and uh, the position on the y-axis. And yeah, as you can see the, in this example, there's a timestamp of 10 and the position of five. And if we uh, uh, add a velocity of 0 0.5, we get this nice straight line, which allows us to derive any other position uh, at any other point in time. So that allows us to, to synchronize things with just this information. And if you don't like straight lines and want things to be a bit more interesting, you can also define an acceleration to get a curve. But yeah, that's totally optional. You don't have to do this. And uh, the timing object itself is a lightweight class which wraps this vector and takes care of it. And it has basically only two methods to query the current vector, which gives you the current vector, and to update it, which updates the current vector. And then it may also fire an event once in a while when the vector got changed externally, and, and we'll see how that can happen in a minute. And then the other piece is the timing source property, which is a property which anything that could be controlled by a timing object should be, implement, uh, should be implementing. And um, the, the spec does, for example, define that it should be uh, on a video element. And, but it's actually possible to do this on a custom web component or on any other component that you can think of. Uh, could, for example, be a um, video player like Dash.js or Video.js. And this is how it's defined in the spec. Like in this example, you have a video element with an ID video. And if you grab that, you can just assign a timing object to the timing source. And that will make sure that the video is in sync with the, the timing object. And also changes to the video itself get propagated to the timing object, which can be one of those reasons why the timing object may, may fire an event when it got updated. And since patching the, the native prototype is an anti-pattern, and we don't have a native implementation yet, it's, it's um, done in this way right now. Like if you use one of the two implementations of the timing object, you have to use a standalone function to connect a, um, a video element with a timing object. Like they, they have different names if you use sync, and it's the timing source, and if it's the motion corporation implementation, it's media sync, but it's basically ex exactly the same as we saw on the previous slide. And then the, the last piece of the puzzle is the timing provider, which is um, meant to connect multiple timing objects with each other. And that's uh, something that you need if you want to um, uh, connect or synchronize a timing object across multiple devices. So um, the timing object um, deals with the, the local synchronization and the timing provider basically set, sits on the network level to synchronize things remotely. And it's uh, also very straightforward. You can just provide a timing provider at the time when you create the timing object, and that will synchronize the timing object with the timing provider. And the, the both currently Im available implementations use um, an adaption of the NTP algorithm to, to synchronize the, time, the clock. Um, one of them does this uh, with the peer-to-peer -peer network, and the other one is using web sockets. And here I try to visualize that. Uh, like as you can see on the button, there are these individual components, which could be anything that that's uh, time sensitive, anything that you can think of, and that has a timing source property, which you can assign a timing object to, and um, those timing objects then are connected with the timing provider, which uh, yeah synchronizes them on on a network level. And even though the the um, timing object is only a W3C draft by now. It still had influence on other browser APIs, which you may know. Like, um, for example, the, the media session is the browser API which allows you to control um, the buttons on the operating system level. Uh, for example, on a smartphone, if you um, close the application and you go on a home screen, then you will see play buttons, which uh, you can control with the media session API. But it's not only for buttons, it also allows you to define the position of the currently 
uh, playing media. And that function for doing that is called set position state. And it looks very familiar. Like it also accepts something which looks like a vector. It has a position, as the name implies. It also has a playback rate, which is the uh, corresponding thing to the velocity because it's only meant for media, so it doesn't have to be generic. It has a playback rate. And it also has a timestamp, but it's set implicitly when you call this function. And it doesn't have an acceleration, so the, that's the only downside of it. And then there's also the media session coordinator, which is something that Apple presented, I think, about one year ago. And that's um, an extension to the media session. And it's, it's what Apple um, created to bring their share, share play experience to the web. And it's, um, it's hiding all the synchronization details. So it's, it's uh, somewhere deep in Safari. Um, but Apple states that it could be re-implemented with a timing object, and it would probably be more accurate when, when doing so. So there's only an explainer of that so far. It's, it's not yet uh, an official standard. But since Apple proposed the explainer, it's obviously also in Safari. Uh, right now. Yeah, uh, after all, I think the, the timing object um, is, is still a draft, as I said, and if it ever becomes a standard, depends on, on how it progresses through the WCC's uh, standard process. I, I will do my best to push it as far as I can, but my power is very limited. But uh, yeah, if it becomes a de facto standard, it really depends on us to, if we start using it and um, um, make sure that it has widespread adoption, then, then it becomes a standard, even though it's not an official standard. So if you like the idea that we can uh, synchronize anything by just connecting a timing object to it, then you can start making this happen or help making this happen by opening an issue or a PR on your favorite player. And if you want me to help out, you can tag me. I'm also named Chris Cotantin on GitHub. Yeah, and I'll, I'll try to help. And there's also, um, the multi-device timing community group, which is the, the organization in the W3C, which, which takes care of this standard. And it has a GitHub repository where you can open issues and give feedback if you, if you want to. You can also join this group, but you don't have to. You don't even have to become an official member. You can just go on GitHub and, and open an issue if you have anything to, uh, yeah, to add or any feedback. Yeah, after all, I think the, the timing object suffered from bad timing itself. Like it was presented in 2015. And back then, it, it wasn't really supported in any browser. You couldn't really use it. And no one really wanted to use it. But nowadays, with uh, things like BBC's Together or the aforementioned Apple SharePlay, this uh, a use case is uh, quite common now. And I guess a few of you also have this use case in, in your application. And maybe you didn't even know that there's already a standard for that, and you rolled your own which is absolutely possible, but yeah, tedious. And I think it would be cool if we could agree on a, on a common standard to do all, the, all of this. Uh, yeah. As I already said, there are two already, uh, implementations which you can use today. One of them is called Sync. That's what I'd, I built. And the other one is uh, from the Motion Corporation. That's uh, the comp company that originally started the specification. And yeah. I'm happy to talk about the timing object all day. So if you want to talk about it, just reach out and chat with me at the conference. Or if you watch this remotely, yeah, feel free to ping me. Thanks a lot for having me.